hello, what's going on? What's going on, my people, my people, my people? All right, calm down, Carolise. Okay. <laughs> Do you guys know anybody else who is as excited about their career as I am? Is not weird? I know, right? I should have more things to be excited about in my life. I do, I do. But I'm also excited about my career and I want to share with you. I want to help you. I want to provide the resource I couldn't find when I was trying to get started. So that's why I am very happy with the kinds of responses I'm getting. I'm very happy that people have found my content useful and I keep being encouraged to keep doing these videos because of the feedback. So don't stop sending me the feedback, guys. I may not respond right away, but I, I read them. So I get the emails. I get the comments on my Facebook. If you're not following me on Facebook, go look for me on Facebook. It's Carolise. It's easy to find, right? Just my name. And uh, I also have a group that I have um, discussions in. So I'm very, very encouraged with the feedback. And thank you so much, guys, for subscribing. My channel is growing, and I'm, I'm very encouraged to keep doing this. So good. So one of the things that I've found that is lacking in our space is that people, they do uh, maybe university degrees, it's business analysis. And I was looking through the offering that most universities are offering for business analysis. And it seems to be geared towards data. It's a lot of data analytics and reporting. And the reason is because I feel like it's easier to teach data analysis you have a starting point you can you know explain how you pull data you can walk students through sql and all that stuff it's very teachable it's easy to teach um but that's only one part of the business analyst role and actually it's a whole different career business analytics or business intelligence or data analyst is different from the business analyst where most of us struggle is that when we come into the working world we find that being able to actually do the job in the way that the employers want us to do it is different from how we've been taught in school. So there's always that big gap of education versus practicality and working in the actual field. So what I found is that people come to me and they say, Carolis, I wish I had some case studies to understand it. I want to see what the job really is going to be asking me to do so I can feel like I can do the job. So I've heard you, I've heard you. And so I've created these business analyst case studies to help you. Now, I already have some on my website and I've, I've done a video before where I walked through how to create these process flow diagrams and all these different things. And it's been very well received, but people want more. They just want more. So I'm going to walk you through today my website and show you where you can go find these case studies so you can practice to be a BA. I want you to be practical. I don't want you to be only academic. I don't want you to know the theory. And then you go into the job, you don't know how to apply any of it. I need you to be able to do the job as well as know the concepts. <laughs> All right. So the way you're going to be able to do the job is to practice with the case studies. It's also going to help you in your interviews to be able to speak with better confidence because you've done one like it before. You know what a BRD looks like. You know how to put a BRD together. You know how to construct a user story. You know how to break down these bigger features into smaller chunks that are manageable, that are estimatable, that are a part of the user story. You know how to write the user story with the right acceptance criteria. You know where to start and to stop. You know where you hand off to your QA and where you jump back in as a BA. You just need to know all these things, all right? So I'm going to walk you through today the case studies that I have on my website that you can go get. Now, there's a charge for these because I can't give everything free. I give you like three free and then you can get the rest. Right? I have to charge you something so you have some skin in the game. But it's there, it's available, and you're not going to find this anywhere else. The way that we're teaching people in the universities is very reporting-based, and it's not representative of the real world. I don't want you to have the shock of having done the degree and then you get the job and you're like, oh my God, what do I do? Oh my God, what? And it's struggle, struggle, struggle. I want to ease the pain. I went through it. I felt it. And some people, they're like, I went through it, so you do it too. No, I'm like, I went through this very painful process to get here. How can I help others to get it easier? How can I just provide information to help you get started easily? Because for me, it's not, it has no benefit to me that you go through the same pain. Like, what's the point, right? I grow as I share. I become a better professional as I help you to become a professional as well. So for me, 
it's it's no problem sharing my knowledge i have no problem at all i just want you guys to know the information is available out there so you don't have to struggle as well <laughs> all right so let's get started let's talk about these case studies right now okay guys so when you go to my website you'll see that i have a number of things on here my latest videos all that stuff so if you go to case studies you'll see i have case study downloads and case study articles let's go to articles first so under case study articles i have a list of articles that i have uh, written on case studies right so for example there's one about the process flow i did a whole video on this let's click on this for a little bit where i talked about this case study of um you know change in the process from an in-store pickup to having it more covid friendly right so we walked through the process flow i walked you through how these diagrams are put together we had the problem statement we went through the whole thing right so you can go through this the video is embedded in the page as well so you can go through this and you can walk through how we arrived at the solution because i want you to get into the habit of thinking like a business analyst now there's some other case studies on here this one was about um writing the business requirements document for a system integration case study a few people attempted this one but it's because it's system integration people are like oh it just looks hard do hard things okay that's how your brain is going to be adapted to this kind of thinking do hard things okay folks so you don't know much about api go find out okay so with this one we talk about being able to integrate um using salesforce and another tool for accounts and opportunities and it goes through the whole problem here and then you're able to think about what the decisions are that the management team has made and how can you integrate that between these different systems. Obviously you're gonna to have to use an API. It's not for you to know how an API works or the, the calls that you need to have. It's for you to know how to write the user stories and then you'd have the conversation with your technical team for them to give you the details about the API, right? So you don't, you don't have to know all the intricate method names and fields, et cetera, for the API, but you have to be able to think about how you would approach this kind of problem because this is a real world problem. So here I give you some examples of um, sales opportunities that you can click on. There's some Microsoft Teams examples, uh, links that you can go and look about how to integrate Microsoft Teams or how does it work. Most people work with Teams right now, so they're familiar with it. But this was written a few years ago when you know Teams is just get, getting um, popular. And I give you some examples of what the screens look like right now and some notes as to how to think about this. Right? It's a highly technical case study right but you don't need to have prior knowledge of salesforce or microsoft team to do it but it would help right so you i just give you some pointers i want you to challenge yourself to go do this case study very few people attempted this case study go and try it try it and then maybe you could you know form a little team a little group of people maybe if you're at a school you can have your other classmates come together and think through this if you're by yourself you can just come up with your solutions you know what i mean but you have to practice real world problems. The things that they're teaching you in school is sometimes they give you the problem and they, they make it kind of a little easier because they want you to, to you know, to pass, right? Uh, it is in the interest of your, the person you're paying for the course that you actually feel like you've learned something. So their interest is for you to feel like you've learned something and to move away, to go away thinking that you can do this. My interest is for you to do the job. <laughs> My interest is that when you get your career started, you get your first job and they give you something like this where you got to integrate multiple systems, you don't freak out. So please go check out this case study. It's a technical case study about integration with APIs. Go learn, go read it and go try it. It doesn't have to be perfect, but you need to try, okay? Think about this stuff. Here's the other one. This is about writing the business case for a food delivery service. We went through this with my team when we were doing our um, mentorship a few years ago. So it gives you the problem, the background, what the expectations are, and what you need to consider when you're putting together this business case, all right? Business cases are things that they expect the BA to write as well. So you need to be comfortable writing a business case and coming up with a recommendation. 
So go and practice this case study. As a matter of fact, in my courses on, let me go to my business analyst training hub, I have a course on um, the case study. So you can go through this course. You can enroll for this course. It is a paid course. You can go through this and it walks you through everything that you need to know to be able to do uh, a, a project from scratch, from the business case to the requirements solicitation to uh, all of the details that you need to get the project from zero to implementation, right? So this, this, this course goes through a lot, a lot of information in here and it's all very uh, beginner friendly, if that makes sense. I talk to you at a level that you don't have to know everything to get in, right? So you enroll for this course, or I've not enrolled, <laughs> I've enrolled to my own course. But the point is I'm trying to show you the options that you have, uh, the, the course is structured like this, where you can go through all of these different sections. It's very short classes, like this one is probably the longest, 23 minutes, but it's because I'm talking about really deep stuff, elicitation techniques, how to elicit requirements, how to get to the root cause, right? I get excited about that stuff. So I take a little longer, but you can see the timelines of this course. It goes through a lot of details. And then at the end, because this was a class I gave to beginners as well, at the end, there's all these questions that they ask, you know, what, you know, how to do the work. So the things that they're asking would be things that you probably ask as well. So you get the answers as well. It's not like one of those recorded video where it's just somebody talking at you and you're, you have questions and you don't really know how to get to the answers. This is very interactive. So you hear the reaction of the audience that I'm teaching and they tell me and, and give me feedback and it's, 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 it keeps you awake. Let me say it that way. <laughs> None of my courses are boring, okay? I don't do boring. I do exciting and you get to learn with lots of spirits and enjoyment. I want you to enjoy what you're doing, all right? So that's what we do here. So this is the case study uh, for the course, but you have to pay for that one. If you want, you can go just try it. Try it. Go here, read the background, attempt to do this case study. These are the things that you'll be asked to do in the real world world all right do real world stuff don't be doing all this stuff they teach you at school that is like you know minimalist in the real world they're not playing with you they're giving you hard stuff so be comfortable doing hard stuff okay be comfortable doing hard stuff all right so now that we've looked at the case study articles I have. And again, I have one that has the example, the question, the problem, and the answer and the video walking you through how you should think about it. So you have a clear example of how you should think about it. And the other two are the ones that you need to just practice on your own. Now I do have some that I have already solved for you that are coming from real world projects, projects that are in the real world that people actually had to solve for their company, for their business. Some of these came from people who were going up for interviews and this was a case study they were given to solve to be able to get the job and they have gotten the job, right? So I'm walking you through these things because this is what you need to expect in the real world. So let's go. If you go to case study downloads, that is where I have an offering of case studies that you can choose from. I have the task management system. This is a user story writing case study. I have software project roadmap. This is more like a template though. There's reporting and anal analysis, high level business requirements case study. So we walk through how to come up with uh, requirements for reporting and analytics. Um, there's account planning software, competitive analysis, where they're asking you to go and compare what the competitors are doing and how would you create that competitive analysis document? That's what that is. There's a mobile app that we built and I have the case study here. These are some saving card case studies. So all of these are real projects. I had to change the names, obviously, of the companies and the different tools because I want to keep it anonymous. But it's all from real projects. This is not made up stuff. So let's look at this one, which is a user story case study. It is for sale, by the way. It's not free. Everything can't be free. You got to pay for something. I'm not going to become a millionaire from this price, but I want you to have some skin in the game so you can pay to, to learn these additional things. So I made the price very, very affordable. So what it is, is um, basically you can come in here and you can see what the case study is about. So you know what you're buying, right? You know what you're getting into. 
And this one is about how to break up a large feature into manageable user stories, the level of detail you should have in your user stories and your acceptance criteria, what questions you need to ask a development team, because that's important too. When you're doing a refinement, what do you ask them? How do you know what they should be telling you versus what you should know on your own? And how do you push back on the design? When they give you a design that this is not doable or this is not going to help the user, how do you push back? What questions do you ask? You need to know to do that, right? So that's what this case study is about. So it gives you, in all of these case studies, I will explain to you what the problem is, what the scenario is. You get the problem for free, but you got to pay for the solution. Um, so this is a, a Kanban board style task management system that we were building. And they ask you, they say, you are the BA. You are the BA on this project. You have to come up with the user stories for this project. What are you going to do? That's what the task is right so this is what all of these case studies are it gives you a problem and you are assigned to that problem now you go off and think through based on all the details i gave you how would you come up with this it's at it's at the level that you would be expected to do in the real world in the real world they give you a high level problem and you have to figure out the details this is why i'm training you to think like that all right so that's what it is so you now need to go Attempt it on your own, and then you can download the answer and see how well you did, all right? So with this case study, it's going to be a downloadable file that is editable, so you can use it as a template for your future documentation. It breaks down into the user stories that you need um, for the task management system. In this case, you have the detail acceptance criteria. You have a list of questions you should be asking your UX team or your development team to make sure you're building things that are valuable to the user, not to your team, to the user. The user needs to find value in what you build. So that's what it is. And it, so that's going to help you to be trained as to how to think about these, uh, the, these problems, right? So yeah, so go get this one. This is very good. This one, I had to put it in Word. It's a Word file. But in the real world, you do these user stories in Jira or DevOps, right? Or whatever tool you're using, target process, whatever. But because this is something I want you to download, it's hard to download it if it's in Jira. So I'm giving it to you in a, in a Word document that you can copy and paste into your Jira. And you can see how your stories should be broken. Now you can see the mockups that go with each story. You can see that the way the user stories are constructed, how you word them to make them clear, how you number them, how you indent, all, all of that is there for you to just practice, <laughs> right? Just practice. And then you'll know how to do it on your own for your project. So it's all there for you to just go and practice. Just practice and you'll be able to do this, all right? I literally cannot make it any easier. I can't, I've tried. <laughs> I'm doing everything possible. <laughs> All right, so you have all of these case studies at your at your fingertips now. So the reporting and analytics one, this one's also very interesting. It's more about um, data reporting and fields and stuff like that. So with this one, um, I go straight into the scenario that you're trying to solve for. And then uh, the, this one's a little bit more intense because this is analytics and business intelligence and integration and embedded fields and all that stuff. So if you really want to challenge, this one will challenge you, all right? So you get into this and it's going to ask you to, you are the BA with this company and you need to create the high level business requirements document. High level business requirements document is different from business requirements document only in the sense that you're not expected to go into the detail in this one. It's just, what are we trying to solve for? What is the general solution that we're going to have? So it's at a higher level. Um, and then there will be more discussion to get into the details because it's so technically challenging, right? So this is one that if you really want to think at that level, this is a great one for you to practice as well. Uh, let's jump to some other one. Um, let's do the mobile app. So the mobile app one is pretty interesting. It's a whole mobile app, all the functionality and features of a mobile app to solve a real world problem. And it really gets into the level of detail that you need. It gets into a lot of documentation that is client facing. So this is an example of how would you take something that you're building internally, but you need to be able to explain that to a vendor or a client. So you have to know how to write requirements, one for your technical team to consume, but now you got to write something for an external third party to consume. The details that you add is different. The way you word it is different. So this is going to give you the example of how you write uh, requirements that will be consumed, not by your technical team, but by a third party who needs to understand what it is that you're doing without getting into all the nuances of how your system actually works. So you get that with the mockups. It has all the mockups in there. Very, very good document. Uh, I was very proud of it. This is one I did myself. 
uh, in one of my projects. I'm very proud of this. So go get that and see how that's written. Um, let's see what else can I share with you guys. Yeah, there's just a lot of these things. There's a savings card one that talks about it's from a pharmaceutical case study. So the pharmaceutical company is creating a savings card that their patients can use when they go to fill their prescriptions. And this one walks through the scenario of how to get that done and what it looks like, the forms that you need to fill out, and then they ask you to solve the problem, right? So you need to go create a BRD for this. So there you have it, right? So there's a lot here. Again, I can't make it any easier. I, I don't know if you guys, <laughs> if you guys still can start your career after all this information and help I'm giving you, I, you know, I don't know, but it's here for those of you who need the case study to practice how to be a BA, the case studies are here. Go get it. All right. So there you have it guys. So there you have it. Those are the case studies that you need when you go through these. Um, you're going to know how to write your BRDs. You're going to have a concept of how to structure things. You're going to have a concept of the kinds of questions you should be asking your development team in your refinement sessions. You're going to have something that you did that represents the real world so that when you go in your interviews, you'll be able to talk about the, the case studies that you've done. You'll be able to explain how you write documentation. You'll be able to explain how you come up with the user stories because you thought through it. I want to challenge your thinking. I want to get the mindset so that no matter what the problem is, you have the approach to, uh, to be able to solve it, right? And again, let me say it better. You're not there to solve the problem. You're there to think about the navigation to get to the solution. Let me say it that way. So you don't have all the pieces. And that's why you're going to come up with something. You're going to pull the team together. You're going to discuss it. And together, you're going to have the solution. But you need to be that glue that brings them together to know what to ask, to probe, to, to be able to do this job. All right? So... That's it for today. That's the case studies for today. Go check it out on my website, carolis.com. All right. Go follow me on Facebook. You know, I need some more Facebook sub, uh, subscribers too. So subscribe to this video for sure. Like the video. Comment on the video. Share the video. Let other people know what's going on. Share your knowledge. I'm sharing with you. You share with others. We help each other. Okay. We got to help each other. All right. That's how we will grow in this society. So hope this was helpful. And I will see you guys next time. Bye.